The Sony a7 IV has quite a few video codec, frame rate, and bit rate combinations, which gives tons of flexibility, but can be a little confusing. Today, I'll be explaining what video settings the Sony a7 IV offers and what the differences are between all the options. The Sony a7 IV has so many different video settings. There's 10-bit, 8-bit, 422, 420, H.264, H.265, 24 and 120 frames per second, as well as long GOP and intra-frame compression. Supplemental to the regular shooting modes, the a7 IV also has a video setting called SNQ, which is in-camera, time lapses, and slow motion. SNQ has all the same options that regular movie mode does, but it does not record audio. So here in file formats are the codecs. There is XAVC HS, S, and SI in 4K, as well as 1080 versions for S and SI. XAVC HS is Sony's H.264. 265 codec. It is more efficient and has higher compression without any loss in quality when compared to H.264. XAVCS is H.264 and it's a very standard codec that has been around for a very long time and most cameras use it. Lastly is XAVC SI and it's also H.264. However, it uses intraframe compression when compared to the long GOP compression that both XAVC HS and S use. Put simply, intraframe compression saves every frame individually when you're recording a video. While long GOP, which stands for group of pictures, saves parts of your image that are similar between each frame and groups them together, reducing file size. Pros and cons for these codecs are that XAVC HS has small file sizes with the highest quality. Bit rates for HS and S are the exact same, but being HS is compressing more data, more information is being stored. The downside is due to its high compression, some computers have a difficult time editing the files and there might be some issues with playback as well. XAVCS is middle ground. It's not insanely compressed and it's not the highest quality. Your computer will be able to edit it fairly well and the file sizes are the same as XAVC HS. Lastly, there is XAVC SI, the highest bitrate, lowest compression option. Intraframe compression is used instead of long GOP, which is very easy to edit for your computer because it doesn't need to decode the compressed information. And as each frame is saved individually, the quality between each frame should theoretically be greater. This option is the best for videos where there is a lot of movement throughout the entire frame. If you want your machine to be able to edit the footage fast without transcoding, and I've read that it's the best option for color grading as each frame is saved at its highest quality instead of as a group of images that is compressed together. The downside is the insanely massive file sizes that are generated in a very short period of time. Moving on to movie settings. This is where you can change the bit and frame rate, color depth of 8-bit or 10-bit, as well as chroma subsampling of 422 or 420. As you increase the frame rate, bit rate will naturally go up as you capture more frames per second. 10-bit saves 64 times more color information than 8-bit, which has color grading benefits, while 422 has less compression than 420, but some argue that the quality difference between 422 and 420 is minor, while creating problems for editing and playback. Generally speaking, the higher bit rate and higher chroma subsampling gives you the most latitude when you're color grading, which will let you shift the colors more before your footage starts to fall apart. The trade-off is the large file sizes, footage that is more taxing on your machine, and potential issues with playback. Here's a list of all the frame rates and bit depths for each codec and their corresponding bit rates. As you can see, the achievable bit rates in regular movie mode range from 16 to 600. Each codec has 10 and 8-bit options, but XAVC HS offers the most combinations with it being the only one that lets you pick 10-bit 422 or 10-bit 420. All the other options lock you in at 10-bit 422 and drops you down to 8-bit if you want 420. There is three tiers of bitrate options, all in 10-bit for XAVC HS, high, medium, and low. It's worth noting though that this codec only allows you to record 24 and 60 frames per second with no option for 30. Next is the standard XAVC S 4K and 1080, which offers 10-bit 422 and a high and low 8-bit 420 with 24, 30, and 60 frames per second, as well as 120 frames per second in 1080. Last is XAVC SI 4K or 1080, which automatically locks you in at the highest bit rate of 10-bit 422. Moving on to SNQ, it has a separate tab in the a7 IV, but you still need to pick a codec from the file format tab. It actually has almost all the exact same bit 
and frame rates that regular movie mode does, with the exception of unlocking XAVC SI 120fps in 1080. As I mentioned already, all the bit rates in SNQ are the same as in the regular movie modes. However, they act a little differently depending on the frame rate you choose. In this option, you have to pick the frame rate that you want the camera to record the video and the frame rate that you want the output to process in. For instance, you can shoot 120 FPS in 1080, pick a 24 FPS output, and slow down your footage right away by five times. Or you can choose to shoot one FPS in a 24 FPS output and have a time lapse that is sped up 24 times all right in camera. This is where things get a little bit confusing. Using a 24 FPS output, since that's the most standard, we can see that the bit rates for S and Q are listed the same as the regular movie mode. However, this is not the true bitrate output because you need to apply a multiplier. For slow motion options, you have to multiply the bitrate by how much the footage is being slowed down or divide the bitrate by how much it is being sped up in a time lapse. For instance, a 120 FPS video slowed down to 24 FPS output is being slowed down by five times, meaning you need to multiply this bitrate of 89 megabits per second by five, which gives you 445 megabits per second for the final video. Conversely, for a 1 FPS video, the footage needs to be sped up 24 times, so you need to divide 89 by 24, giving you a tiny bitrate of 3.7 megabits per second. Here's a graph for all the true bitrates for each recording frame rate and a 24 FPS output. One last strange thing I want to touch on is memory card options. The Sony a7 IV can accept V30, 60, and V90 cards, which will allow for sustained write speeds of 240, 480, and 720 megabits per second. The a7 IV can also use the fast CF Express Type A cards that can sustain write speeds of 3200 megabits per second. While running tests, I noticed that a V30 card would not record any of the time lapses for any codec, even though some of the bit rates are single digits. I noticed a lot of these inconsistencies with SNQ modes and a couple in the regular movie mode. Because of this, I created a separate video linked here and down below testing every single memory card the A74 can use to find out which cards are needed for which video modes. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.